talking about the murder in Oregon. Uh, and it's a uh, wrongly convicted Frank Gable who just got out uh, the murder of this uh, Michael Frankie, who was the uh, uh, corrections department uh, uh, captain down there. We'll be right back with more Phil Stanford right after these messages. And now a word from our sponsors. Are you ready to change your life but don't know how to start? Is your stress and worries keeping you awake at night? Have you been battling grief, anxiety, or depression all alone? Have you lost touch with your own sense of being or spirituality? Soul Free Therapies offers professional and affordable live video streaming counseling and coaching services from the comfort of your own home. Sessions offered in English, Spanish, and Portuguese. Go to our website at www.soul-free.com and book your first session today. Hey, check out our brand new sponsor, Dynamic Solutions 2. That's the number two. They offer a life-changing dynamic financial solution. The finest in fast, professional, affordable credit repair. Is your credit in bad shape? Do you need a new car? Ready to buy a new house? Do you want to rent an apartment? Are you going to apply for a job? Any one of these activities, they're going to ask for a credit report and then check out your credit score. Let Dynamic Solutions 2 erase your negative credit remarks. They have affordable monthly prices. They accept Visa, MasterCard, PayPal options available. You go to www.dynamicsolutions.com That's the number two, dot com, or call 424-888-2820. 424-888-2820. Now, if you enter promo code Ed or you mention Ed Opperman, you get a 10% discount. How's that? You get a free consultation, all negative items removed, get back in positive credit position, Dynamic Solutions 2, life-changing dynamic financial solutions. 424-888-2820. Tell them Ed Opperman sent you. You get a 10% discount. Hey, you, podcast listener. This is your last chance. After this... There is no turning back. Take the blue pill. You wake up in your bed and go back to listening to mundane podcasts that won't challenge your religious beliefs and your so-called truths about reality, the universe, and consciousness. Take the red pill. Subscribe to the Event Horizon podcast hosted by Mark Anthony Peterson, and he will show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Event Horizon takes a walk into the paranormal with a splash of conspiracy. It's the podcast that would be born if David Icke and the X-Files had a baby. Subscribe to the Event Horizon podcast by Mark Anthony Peterson on Spreaker, iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, CastBox, Stitcher, or any of your other favorite podcast platforms. Remember... All we are offering is the truth, nothing more. It's the Opperman Report, and now here is investigator Ed Opperman. Okay, welcome back to the Opperman Report. I'm your host, private investigator Ed Opperman. Uh, we're here today with Phil Stanford, a returning guest. We had him on once before talking about the, his Watergate book, uh, which uh, is uh, hailed by everyone. Everyone loves this book, A White House Call Girl. Uh, the Real Watergate Story. He's got this new podcast, Murder in Oregon. You can hear it on iHeartRadio. They release a new episode every Thursday, so you can go there right now and catch the first two episodes. There's another one coming up. Uh, former PI, he was telling me in Florida and D.C., which is where I'm going to be headquartered at. I'm going to Florida, and my daughter's up in D.C. I'll be traveling back and forth. Maybe he can uh, hook me up with some new enemies in that part of the country. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I... I I hadn't thought of it for a while. You you, you asked me about uh, being a PI. Yeah. Uh, at, at one point, I dropped out. Oh, out of journalism. I'd, I'd been working on a mag, political magazine in D.C. and I, I really hated politics. I, I I chucked it all and moved to to Miami. And uh, for a while, I, I worked for the Miami News. I was doing <laughs> detective stories. You know. Uh, and, and, and and enjoying it pretty well, but I, I think the publisher decided I wasn't cost-effective or something like that. I was writing these long stories, 
and and maybe my heart wasn't in it anyway. And so I, I, I could see the writing on the wall, and I got a job with a, a detective agency there. It's called Intercept. And uh, it, it took me several weeks to, to learn that uh, this was no ordinary detective agency. Uh, they were all ex-CIA and military intelligence guys, and they were all deeply involved in the drug trade. Mm. They, they, they were doing work, uh, like security work, uh, first of all, for one of the major drug importers uh, in Florida. And so... Um, while I was still there, and, 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 and it, was, it was a remarkable experience. All, uh, up to that time, I'd been sort of a um, oh, half-assed intellectual writer. I'd, I'd written for the New York Times magazine and uh, on political subjects and, 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 and uh, military subjects. And, 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 uh, but I, I didn't really understand how, how that world worked. And, and, and so not being a journalist and working for them – I, I I was just sort of drawn into the middle of it. And we'd, we'd, they'd tell me all these great stories. And as I said, uh, after a while, though, I, I, I uh, you know, uh, realized that there, there was a good deal more going on. And then not much after that, uh, I realized they were all under indictment. <laughs> it was, uh, they, they'd had grand juries meeting in Houston, Atlanta, and Miami. It was that big a deal. And um, I ended up, uh, they, they were working primarily for a guy named Lamar Chester. And this is a great story. Maybe we want to talk about it uh, more some uh, other time. A former Eastern pilot who was one of the first guys to start flying directly from Columbia. He was, he was a legend as a pilot. Uh, and um, so he was getting the... the they finally indicted him. It was the IRS that got him, not not the DEA, not the customs, and and, and uh, because he'd made his deals with them, yeah, it was IRS. <laughs> and um, by that time, they 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 figured <laughs> if I was down there, and I, I obviously wasn't that interested in in, in making money. I knew I knew what was going on. I must be there from the. Uh, the CIA, because his defense was that he he'd already he, he went public and said, yeah, I, 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 I've, I've flown all these drugs in, uh, but I, I, I did it with government sanctions and, and, and including the CIA. And so he, he had a gray male defense and um, he figured I, I must be down there to help him with the gray male defense. And, and, and so anyway, that uh, before it was all over, I mean, his threat, of course, a gray male defense. Uh, uh, defense threat is that you put me on trial, I'm going to spill all the beans about what the intelligence agencies are doing. Now, his trial was scheduled in uh, for Atlanta, and um, they, it was coming up, uh, and uh, they they got smart. They'd taken away his uh, pilot's license. He loved to fly. They, uh, shortly before the trial, they gave his uh Pilot's license back. He went up in a little Piper Cub, uh, which he could fly blindfolded for God's sake, and crashed. Uh, obviously, they, they they sabotaged the plane, and, and that was the end of Lamar Chester. It's it's one of the, the, uh, the you know, uh, a domestic CIA murder that uh, no one uh, talks about. But uh, I worked for Lamar. He used to pay me in hundred dollar bills because I could not convince him that I didn't work for the CIA. And, and uh, I, I, I must admit that I also accepted his money. Uh, he was uh, doing research. He thought I, I was doing research and that he could pay me to get his people, in my people in Washington, to come to his aid because they'd sort of abandoned him. And um, anyway, that's, that's my private investigator story for Miami. I, I, I probably could have told it a little bit better <laughs> certainly in more detail but that, that that's what that's where i sort of got my education in this this uh general field yes fascinating now is there any chance you think that maybe this plane crash that like he might have like uh, faked his own death oh god no 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 no, no. He, he his his daughter his five-year-old daughter was in the, oh. the plane with him oh, that's he went hard. up for a joyride oh. 
and they had sabotaged the plane. They, they claimed that he ran out of fuel, but uh, I've talked to people. I went down to, he was flying from, from Central America to uh, a farm he had in Northern Georgia. He owned an island in the Bahamas, which was sort of like a way station. Sure. And, um, I mean, it was a Motel 6 for drug dealers. Sure. <laughs> and uh, so he was up at his place in, in Cleveland, Georgia, um, of course, waiting trial. He, he One Saturday morning, I think it was, he went up with his little daughter uh, in the plane and um, crashed. They said he ran out of fuel, which is nonsense. Mm. And and uh, the, the 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 daughter survived. I mean, she I, I think she she had serious injuries, but uh, she uh, miraculously survived. And uh, there was never an investigation. Uh, it was that one was covered up completely. I mean, you talk to anyone who's involved in it, and uh, <laughs> They just laugh about it. Uh, it, it. It was so obvious. So no, the, no um, book written about it or anything like that? I'm sorry? There's never been a book written about it or anything? No, no. It, it's completely uh, escaped everyone's intention. It, 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 it's something I w- want to deal with. I mean, it, it, it's a, a, from my uh, point of view, it's it, uh, 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 from a uh, perspective uh, or looking at me, it's, it's it's sort of a funny story because – I was uh, a, a, a novice uh, investigator, to say the least. I, uh, I, I was there because uh, I, w- I was a front for a investigative agency that was basically a CIA front. Mm. They, they were they hired me to handle the stuff that came in from the Yellow Pages because they were so busy. The rest of them were so busy making money in the in the drug business, right, right. And and but and by the time they were indicted, they decided I'm I, I was I was so uh, no one could be quite as dumb as I was. <laughs> so I'm uh, I must be faking it, and I must be there with the CIA. And I can I I could never convince Lamar that I wasn't with the CIA. Maybe that might be a good second season, man, for the for your podcast. You know, that's tell this story. <laughs> hey, I'm serious, man. That's a fascinating story. But back to this uh, a murder in Oregon. I had some notes here right before the commercial. The the, the prison system is, is notorious right. for corruption, drug dealing, and now you got uh, stuff like cell phone, you know, stuff like that. You know, it, it's notorious for the corruption that goes on there. You know, uh, well, how did? Oh yeah, you, it, it's e- it's it's easier to uh, to get drugs in the prison than, than outside sometimes. Right, right, and and. and, and they have this big myth about people bringing it in through their uh, their, uh, through their uh, buttholes, you know. <laughs> this stuff's going in, oh, yeah. in, well, in well, huge well, quantities. Yeah. In, you know. in, in this case, yeah. uh, and, and we we get into this in, in in a couple episodes because it's it's central to the the, the plot of the story we're telling. That uh, they just wives and girlfriends just walked it in. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, they made a deal. You know, you're obviously protected if you can do this. Yeah. You're visiting uh, the prison. You come in with drugs, uh, bo- a balloon in your mouth or, or, or wherever. And it, especially if you're not searched, it's no problem. And you transfer the drugs and you do it again and again and again. It, it's uh, the, the guards were bringing in drugs. They uh, ha- had a particular way of doing it. They would... Uh, it, if it was marijuana, they, they'd drive over it uh, with, uh, with a car, flatten it, and, and just uh, wear it as a belt going in. I, I, I'm not sure exactly how they hooked it up, but it, it was uh, bringing it in in lunch uh, boxes. It, it, uh, it was a standard practice. Yeah, yeah there's, there's tons of contraband in prison. There's no doubt about that. Now, but my question is, though, if everyone knows what's going on there, right? How did this guy, Michael Frankie, if he's a Boy Scout, how did he wind up in that position? Like, was he appointed? Was he elected? Oh, no. He was appointed by the governor. The governor brought him in the, uh, as, a, you know, as someone who would be able to uh, effectively run run the system. I mean, he was uh, 
they, they had a building program. They, they always have had things that had to be worked out. And, and um, 